Given a string that has only positive digits, your task is to decode the string and determine the number of possible ways to decode it. So consider the input string as an encoded message where each digit in the string represents an alphabet from A to Z. So one means A, two means B, three means C, 26 means Z. So if we had this string, for instance, these are some of the different ways you can decode it, either individually, or two, three, 10, one, two, or two, three, 10, instead of one, two, you have 12 here, right? Instead of two and three, we just turn into 23, right? Which is W and 10 and one and two and so on. So here are some more examples of what's going on there. So two, two, five can be two, two, five, 22 and five and two and 25, as you can see here. So three possible ways, we're gonna return three. And in 145, we have 1.5, 14, and 5. And then notice how 1 and 45 don't work because 45 isn't a valid uh, alphabet, like a valid character in the alphabet. And so what does this solution look like? And then 0, 8, 2, because it starts off at 0 in the beginning, there we don't do 0, 8, right? 0, zero 8, it doesn't, doesn't count, right? It doesn't map. So eight, so we just return zero. For the solution to this, I think this diagram is useful. So imagine we had one, two, and four, a string of one, two, and four. Well, we're using dynamic programming, so we're gonna use sub problems, smaller problems to build up to the final uh, answer, the solution to smaller problems to build up to the solution to the final bigger problem that is composed of said small problems. And so, in this case, we're going to look at, okay, if the string was just one, right, what would the answer be? If it was one and two, what would the answer be? And the answer to if it was just one and two would helps us build the answer to if it's one, two, and four, okay? And that, as usual, involves us making this uh, lookup table. And you notice that it is one, one bigger, right? There are four slots compared to three characters here. So this handles the case of the empty string, because if there was an empty string that we're decoding, the only way to decode an empty string is to return an empty string. And so we're going to return one, right? There's only one way to decode an empty string, and that first value is going to be one. And uh, next, we're going to evaluate, okay, if it was just this string in that we were looking at, how many ways are there to decode that, right? And we're going to use the answer to the sub-problem, right? The, which is the empty string to find the answer to this problem. And that is going to give us one. And you can think of it like, okay, if there was just one, how many ways are there to decode one? Just the, the letter A, right? That's all there is to it. And so I think now is a good time to look at the code up until this point. Um, and we have this here. So we're passing in the decode string, in this case, one, two, and four. We get the string length, the length of the string, because it's going to help us create the DP area lookup table. Here we set the case for the empty string to be one. And then we do a little check. So if the first thing in the string is not zero, like in that first example, right? If it's not zero, then set it to one because there's only one way to decode a string of length one. Otherwise, if it's zero, then there's no point in doing any work, just return zero because there's no way to decode a string that starts with zero. And now moving on to the next part of the problem, when we, when we move on from one, a string of length size one, to one that is this big, right? Including one and two. If we're gonna consider the case where, okay, two, two is just a single character and the number of ways to decode that is gonna be equal to the number of ways to decode it without that, without that character. And that's gonna give us one. Right? But then another way to decode this is not just to consider just this character was added, but if 12 was added, right, instead of just two, 12 was added, was what we were considering instead of two. And the solution to that is the number of, is just one way, right? Uh, you, you pick that from the, empty, the case of the empty string and, a pe and increment it by what you see there. So in this case, we already have one from considering two would be B, right? considering just B, but if we didn't consider this to be A and B, but instead to be whatever the 12th letter of the alphabet is, uh, we'd have to add what we got for B, which is one, 
to what we got for if this was just one one a single letter and we get that from the empty string over here dp of zero and that's the gist of the problem and you just do that to the end so in this case this is what it is we're iterating from two up to the end of the string up to and including the end of the string and then we're saying okay if the first character is not zero right and the number of ways to decode the substring without the current character we just pick and increment what was there before because if adding a string doesn't increase the number of ways so there's no you might think there should be a one plus this here but because uh adding just one character doesn't increase the number of ways for the previous uh character length it's still just the same count so that's why we don't add one here we just put this in here and then we consider the case of okay what if we didn't think of it as just one character we thought of it as a two digit two digit number a valid two digit number and this is how we check if it's a valid two digit number if two characters before right there was a one or two characters before there's a two and right just just before it's less than six so 26 it right, turns out to be 26. this case where we we move we we consider 12 instead we have this check this check makes sure that 12 is a valid can be decoded that's what that's what this is checking it's checking if it can be decoded and because we have this plus one when we are not indexing the dp but indexing the string um our cursor what it points to right here corresponds to one minus here right so that's why uh, we're checking negative two and negative one because that represents that's how we check if 12 is actually uh something we can add and if it's something we can add then we pick uh what was what's there without 12 right which in this case is we have zero one way the empty string and uh increment what is our dp of i and once we step through the entire code we do that through the entire code base uh, um, the entire sequence of characters we then arrive at the final answer which is the last thing in the dp array that we've been constructing and we are done happy people see if we need okay so let's look at the time complexity of this we loop through everything once so it's o of n and space complexity is o of n and of course we can do better but usually this isn't out of this out of the scope of a lot of interviews um where we just use two variables previous or current and move space complexity from o of n to o of one that's all there is to this problem thank you